Have you ever thought that how can you make your APIs better? How can you make sure that your APIs are performing the way you want them? That's a really a big question. And in this video, we are going to be exactly answering that. Hey there, everyone. My name is Atesh and I make a lot of videos. So in case you are new on this channel, just consider hitting that subscribe button because we discuss everything from absolute fresher beginner level to something which is really pro, advanced and is production grade. And in this video, I was I was actually having some fun on my own that I was trying to make our APIs much more optimized so that they produce faster result and how can I make them a little bit better. So I thought, hey, I should not do this alone. I am a YouTuber. I should make videos about it. So let me share this experience and maybe this experience might be helpful for you as well. Uh, maybe you want to build an API and you're looking forward that how can I make my app APIs much more optimized. Maybe you're working in a company and in that company you have your backend APIs but you want to monitor that are my APIs working nicely if there is any downtime with particular one or two endpoints or if two or three endpoints are making a little bit more laggy or time how you can monitor them and optimize those specific endpoints. So I'll walk you through I'll recreate all these steps that what I did and in fact I bought a product for this one specifically for this particular video demo uh, but actually I have to use it on my own as well so that's why I'll be sharing that one. So step one, whenever you are building any APIs, once you have done building that, the most of the people who are just getting started in that, and especially the beginners and fresher, they always think that I have done my fair share of data structures and algorithm optimization. That means the APIs are going to behave absolutely fine. That's not the case. That is not the real world. Yes, of course, I do agree. The data structures and algorithm knowledge makes your backend much more robust, uh, more efficient and more optimized. But it's not always the case. Sometimes you have to come up with those edge cases and special solutions, uh, but you can only come about them when you are monitoring them and measuring. The only way to optimize is by measurement. You should measure first, then do some steps and then measure again. This is the only way to optimize. Otherwise, if you are just thinking, hey, it works, maybe it works, then you are just doing a guessing game, which is not an ideal scenario. Always measure, do some changes, then measure again. And that's the only way that how you do things in the production grade environment. So let me walk you through. And by the way, you can follow along all of this. I'm actually having this as an entirely open source project. And this is all about it. So let me just share my screen first. So this is the free API dot app. Uh, this is the project which we build as a totally open source. By the way, you can just click on uh, this click here to get access and you will be redirected onto the GitHub. We created this entire API hub as free API out of frust frustration. I teach a lot of courses, maybe in React, JavaScript, uh, Java, Swift, whatever. Using of the API is one of the most core foundation of whenever you are teaching something. And when you teach from somebody's API, which is third party or any other other company, uh, they might change the APIs because it is not serving them for the business cases. They are not going to be stopping just because, hey, somebody has, is doing a tutorial on our API. So they change their APIs and that's it. The video tutorials are over. Now students want a little bit fresh of a resource to actually replicate what I'm teaching there. And that's a common case with almost every teacher who is out there. So out of that frustration, we created this entire API, uh, open source project, free API, in which you have a lot of simulation of APIs. And in case you want to learn about APIs, this is the go-to place. I'll walk you through that how advanced this is and what kind of problem we are facing. So we recently actually hosted this onto a free API. So let me just walk you through with that. You can just go on to uh, api.freeapi.app very soon I'll be linking this on the home page as well but in the meantime this is the entire API and this is where you actually learn all about how this thing actually works so there are some public APIs you can try to get random products maybe you want to build a shopping cart uh, there are books coats meals dogs cat YouTube videos so you can do a lot of things not only that there is a kitchen sink this is the part where you actually truly learn uh, how the production grade APIs are and how these actually work. So here you practice more about get methods, post method, deletes. Uh, you can also see that what happens, how to get the client IPs. Uh, some of the requests are like getting the JPEG images, how to handle them, how to get a gzip response and handle that, which is in itself uh, really challenging things. A lot of dashboard, admin dashboard in the real world application, they send the data in the gzip format. So there's a lot to learn about this. And this is not just the toy application. We have entire authentication cooked up, 
e-commerce entire application of the e-commerce was built for this one to do social media chat app yes we use socket for this one and a lot more a lot more is there now there are a couple of things like in the default there is a health check you can go ahead and check out these health check values so i'll just go ahead and open this up so this is the url which makes a request to the health check and another one which is inside the kitchen sink where we are getting this JPEG request or maybe a PNG request, whichever one you want to work with. So both of these, the health check is just specifically for doing the health check that whether everything is working fine or not. And the PNG image actually sends some of the buffer value. So we need to learn how to handle them. But I was a little bit cautious that whether some of these endpoints are behaving the way we want it to be. Can we make them a little bit more optimized? Can we reduce down the response time in all of them? But how to do so? I'm out of clue how to do so because maybe they are already optimized. If I'll try because when I do check it, uh, maybe a couple of more people check it or we do it on localhost, we have no idea how the response is going on. Maybe we should deploy more servers, no idea. So for these kinds of situation, you really need to measure these things. So yes, we are deploying them on the Ubuntu uh, itself. Uh, so this is the basics of it. Uh, but the point is that this is going good, but the the issue here is that we cannot be just relied on these graphs. These graphs are great. Uh, they helps us and uh, walk through a lot about how the usage, bandwidth, and all of these are calculated. This is a fresh one. Uh, but the idea is I want more. And this is where exactly the Manage Engine project, uh, uh, the entire product, by one of our Indian companies, Zoho, comes into the picture. Now, if you'll go look at the products inside the Manage Engine, you will see inside the IT operation and management. Uh, there is one of my favorite, which I've talked a couple of other times on this platform as well, uh, Site24 by 7. A lot of people don't understand that this is company grade, a production grade application, uh, which you can monitor with this 24 by 7. So this is how it looks like. You can just log in. I'm already logged in. And yes, just to show you, I paid for it. So yes, I paid it with my own money just to show you that how this is good. By the way, not to just show you only, I wanted to use it as well. That's why uh, some of these things, it's not really uh, that expensive, just 800 rupees, nothing more. Uh, if you pay for the yearly plan, it's even much more cheaper. So you can notice I have actually added two of these API endpoints for the monitoring pers perspective. The first one is free API, the image one. The first one is for the health and the second one is that. I'll walk you through how to add your own endpoints as well in these kinds of software and how does the result look like so that you can see how the production grade application works. So let's see the free API. This is a simple endpoint on the health check. And as you can see now, we have a lot of things going on. So if you just go ahead and zoom this one, a little here. So notice here now it says how much the DNS time is, what is the connection time, what is the SSL time, when there was the first byte transferred, the download time, 12 millisecond, which is really nice. And you can see there are more of these graphs. Uh, whenever the spike was happened, what regions are going on more? Should I upgrade? What is the response time by location? If some of the locations are really laggy, maybe somebody in the New York is uh, making these API requests. Uh, then obviously I should be more worried in deploying one of the instance in New York region. But these, these kinds of steps you can only and only take once you have these things. Not only that, you can actually set these test trigger alert. Uh, by the way, you can put the alert as well. Uh, maybe some of the endpoints are downtime, so you can make a trigger alert, maybe SMS to your team that, hey, this is a crucial API, you should not go down. So all these things are actually there in the real world production app. All the time on YouTube, we talk about just building, building, building. Uh, but some of these extra things comes and you only learn them when you reach out to the production level when uh, maybe 1,000, 100,000 people are actually using your application. There is an outage report as well. Uh, based on these reports, people actually uh, make the entire videos that, hey, how was the outage? How we came to know about it? How we resolved those outage? It's not like they magically open up the VS Code and start writing this. This is where the report comes up first. And as you can see at the very top, this is where uh, my health check one is. And similar to this, if I go back onto the monitors, similarly, I was checking the image one that you can put as many as you like, uh, depends on your plan. So you can see this is my throughput, how this is all going on, what is my downtown, uh, what is the availability here? As you can see, all of them are 100. That means all good, no downtime so far, just for the testing purpose. But I can see when somebody is in uh, Japan, uh, the response time is pretty big which is obvious because I've deployed this in the Bangalore region. So yeah, that, that's one thing to worry about. But rest of them are pretty okay. 
now you can see that yes in some of these if this situation is okay but uh, if this is much more crucial, something like Netflix or some EdTech, uh, this is where you look forward that, hey, I need to do something about it. So all of this. Now, how to actually add this? This is really, really simple. Once you have created an account, all you have to do is click on the monitors and then you can click on the plus icon here and you can see a lot of uh, monitoration you can do. I just did for the REST API and this is what it is. I'll just go into the docs again. And let's just say I want to monitor something for the gzip. So let's see what the response is. I can just try it out, hit execute. This is the URL endpoint that it's looking up for. Uh, this is the data that comes back. Let's add this. Let's call this one as gzip. Add this one, checking frequency. I am on a paid plan, so I can just add one minute. And on top of this, uh, this is all okay for me, uh, but feel free to add more. We have a JSON response. You can even match the expression that what do you expect in the response, but by the way, it checks it on its own as well. And uh, you can add more of these options if you wish. I'll just go ahead and hit the save for this one. That's it. Now you can add more monitoration. Some of these are being uh, suggested to you. Maybe you want to have a more monitoration on DNS server, page load time, you want to see how your application is loading and SSL, URL, brand reputation, a lot of them are there. I'll just skip and move on to the monitor dashboard. And now you can see this is going on, so response time and everything. Obviously, it takes some time to uh, generate all these logs and values, and maybe you even need to hit a couple of times these, uh, uh, these ones. So let's just hit a couple of times to see that. And hopefully now this is, this will start generating very soon. So just like previously I showed you, this is exactly the same. Okay, so there we go. Now we can see uh, this is the connection and all of this. Told you, the gzip one is a little bit of a heavier request, uh, but we are getting pretty nicely. The response time is pretty nice. And now you can see in the Japan, this one is pretty decent. Uh, but eventually as the time progresses, it will generate more logs. I highly, highly recommend to check out similar kind of tools where you can see that how things actually goes in the production level. And again, Zoho is one of the most reputed company in the world, not just in India. And you should really check out, this is exactly what a lot of companies use. So that's why I'm just show. I thought let's just have a discussion on it and show you how this actually works. So by the way, uh, if you are interested, do check out uh, this entire project, uh, free API as well. It's totally free, anybody can use it. And also do check out the monitoration things as well. These are used quite a lot in the big scale application. And I just thought to give you some inside picture from the window of YouTube that how the real world applications are optimized how the APIs are optimized, how the how they are monitored, how the downtime is being monitored, and what to do when they are uh, being down. So I'll share more such industry-grade um, insights with you. Uh, that's it for this video. And let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.